Hello there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sherry Fat and I live in Nova Scotia in Canada. On my YouTube channel, I just share my experiences about life here in Canada and also I talk about immigration to Canada. So for those looking to study, visit or live here permanently, uh, I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and I help you with any of these applications, right? So in this video today, I'm talking about proof of funds when it comes to study permit applications. So for your study permit applications, you should have proof of funds to show that you have what it takes to study here in Canada. So one is tuition. You should have the money for your tuition in your account or you could even go ahead and pay school fees. Uh, especially if the school you're going to has a refund policy so, so in case you get your visa uh refused you're able to get your money back from the school so please ask that they have a refund policy so you don't you know lose money uh if you get refused a visa so that's tuition and the next is cost of living expenses uh the, you're required to have ten thousand canadian dollars in your account to show for proof that you have money to take care of yourself for one year also the tuition i spoke about as well is for one year so you're required to show one year tuition and one year cost of living expenses if you're coming alone if you're coming with your spouse for example your spouse would show an extra four thousand dollars if you have a child coming with you and your spouse or your, your yourself is ten thousand dollars your spouse or your next uh, accompanying dependent is four thousand, and the next person is three thousand dollars. And the more people you have, an extra three thousand dollars. So for you, ten spouse or a child, four. Another th third person, three k, and the next three k like that. So any additional, uh, any additional dependents will bring three. Will also show three thousand dollars in your account. So if you're, for example, if you have two kids, so that's ten k for you. 4k for your spouse and three each for each other that's six thousand so in total you should have twenty thousand dollars for cost of living expenses for you and three of your dependents and the more they are the more you you'd show for that so that's already two things after i've ticked off now tuition and cost of living expenses and the third one is your flight fees so the money you use to fly yourself to canada i also show that in your account so uh what i always tell my clients is don't have that exact amount in your account and think that you're good particularly for applicants from africa from nigeria uh, for somebody who is probably from the us uk all these other countries that have a higher rate of approval when it comes to visa study permit applications uh they could get, get, get away with that but so somebody who comes from nigeria or from africa the truth is we have a very high refusal rate when it comes to study permit applications and the number one reason for refusal is funding they think that they don't have this money to pay for your school tuition they think they don't have the means to take care of yourself for the period of study in canada so they, they so most times they refuse visas based on that right also from the past we've seen people who have gotten visas they get here and they go are sick for asylum or they don't go to school so these are records they have and they work with and that's why uh, they tend to scrutinize applications much more than they would for somebody from the uk from the us or from other countries like that right so i always call that extra amount you should have as buffer amount don't have so after paying your school fees or having that money in your account cost of living flight fees have an a buffer amount in your account to show to erase any doubt that you have what it takes to study here financially because so let me give an example so even canadians or pr who live in canada do not pay this tuition as foreign students pay for example if an international student is paying fifteen thousand dollars for tuition a canadian or a pr will pay say 4k say disparity even this 4k they still go and get student loan for them so if you're now coming as an outsider, they want to say that you have this money truly, truly in your account. So they do, 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 you have to erase all doubts there is that you have the money available for you. So one is availability. Another one is accessibility. You have the money, you have shown the money in your account, but is it accessible? right is it accessible that you have you you'll be able to pay this money when the time comes so you should you know you should do all all you can all within your power to show that this money is available and it's accessible to you uh for your school fees and you know for your cost of living expenses right we also mentioned this some people will say oh don't worry i'm going to come uh to canada i'm going to work so hard i'm going to also to pay my school fees to pay my rent to pay my this and that it's easier said than done 
Walking and schooling in Canada is not a walk in the park. In fact, ordinary schooling can be a lot. I have schooled here before. I did a diploma in immigration consulting and it was a lot. I was thinking, ah, maybe it's just, ah, what will I learn? I already come here as a PR. What do I want to learn that I've not learned before? When I started this program, I knew that I did not even know anything about immigration. It was so, 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 so much. The, 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 the coursework, there are quizzes, there are assignments, there are projects, individual projects, group projects, there's exam. And I had, I did 10 modules. Each module has a cutoff you have to meet. You know, you, 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 it's a lot. You know, juggling that with family, with my full-time job was a lot. And it was even a part-time program. I didn't even do part-time. I did part-time for one year. And it was a lot. How much more if you're coming here uh, to do a full-time program and you're only able to work for 20 hours, right? They probably say, I don't worry. When I come, I'm going to work. Let me break it down for you. For example, if you live in, say, in Ontario, uh, where the minimum wage is $15 per hour and you're only allowed to do 20 hours. Uh, just let me also note this, that you know, if you do more than 20 hours as a student while studying, you are contravening your visa terms. That could put you in trouble. You don't want to do that. So if you're working as a as a, as a student uh, here, say in Ontario, maybe half is that as their minimum wage uh, for 20 hours, that's $30 per week times four, that's $120 per month. That's one, two. A one bedroom apartment in Ontario, even in, not even on Toronto, not, not even big city, maybe like a suburb, might even be paying that one too for your rent. Now tell me, how do you want to save money for your school fees? Except you're, you're able to work full time, maybe in summer or during your break. In one year, you can have just a break of say three to four months in total. For the many nine, eight, nine months, you're schooling. You're not allowed to do more than 20 hours per week. So maybe in the second year, you can save up for the second year. But that first year, you must have that money. Because when you come here and you don't have money, I have asked people who will say, I oh, don't worry, I'll come and work here. And they get here, with no, they come, they're able to get the visa somehow, somehow. And they come here without having the school fees. Hmm. It's always tough. So it's very, very tough. That's why people go going to seek for asylum or to declare something or to say they don't have. They cannot. And the truth is, coming here as a student, you have uh, a future. When you come, if your end goal is to get PR or you want to become a Canadian, you, you don't want to mess up your foundation. You don't want to mess up that chance you have in the future to become a PR or a Canadian. So your 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 foundation is the study permits you have. So now be on it, you have to have that foundation you know, well laid. So if you now begin to take asylum, it's not people say don't worry when you get to Canada, when you come and say just come and declare asylum, come and you know seek refugee. Not every person who seeks refugee or who seeks asylum, you know, uh, gets approved. So uh, you, 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 you don't want to put yourself in that kind of fix, right? So try your best to have that first year tuition, at least have it intact. Or even pack if not, or maybe a very large chunk of it. So when you, even if you want to, you know, work very hard to save up, it's not so difficult for you. Because, you know, having to think about your school fees and schooling, uh, it might be a lot. And you really want to do well in your study and you want to graduate, so you're able to apply for PR in the long run, right? I also like to mention another thing when it comes to funding. So people always think, uh, when I have the money, so uh, as you're looking for, say the money you're looking for to have is, say, 15 million, for example, and you have that amount just probably a month or two before uh, they apply they put that money in lump sum bam, into the account that's not being wise because that could be frowned at they may think that okay how did you just get 15 million in one month and just put it there there's no trace there's no accountability there's no explanation as to how you got that money and I mean, you could have sold an investment, you could have sold a property or vehicle or something to get that money. But you have to show proof for that, right? To show proof for that. So, so having the money is fantastic. Uh, what's more important is also showing the source of this money. So, for example, you're earning, say, 55000 naira in Nigeria. And you're coming to study here. You're saying, all right, you earn 55k, and you want to come and pay a school fees of $15,000 per year. That's not being, it might not sound realistic 
to the visa officer right and uh you have to show and if you have been saving up over a period of time please show that proof so you know even though you're earning not even though you're not earning so much you've been saving up for a particular period of time and if you're using a sponsor for example the sponsor also has to show proof as to how they are sponsoring you what they do how much they have you know all those things has to be you know spelled out to the officer so they, they don't have any doubt anywhere uh they'll make them refuse your visa your visa right so there are ways to show proof uh, you can say you're sponsoring yourself or you're being sponsored by somebody else whoever is sponsoring you please show proof uh beyond any reasonable doubt that this person is sponsoring you and uh, if you're using a sponsor for example i uh, cannot say your neighbors cousins mommies husband's son is sponsoring you that's tie that relationship is very far-fetched i mean it's not impossible we are from nigeria for example even somebody that you don't even look and sponsor you it's not impossible but in the canadian system they want to understand why this particular person is sponsoring you what is the relationship why what's the reason what's the end goal what's the return on investment what's the reason why this person is putting this much money on your education so you have to explain you know what this person is to you how, what they do as as work or as business and how they got this money to be able to you know to sponsor you the honors lies on you as an applicant to prove beyond every reasonable doubt that you deserve this visa it's a lot to to to, to prove uh, sadly uh, africans even nigerians face i don't know i, was, I don't know if i'll say it's biases or prejudice uh, a lot of africans nigerians have a very high refusal rate uh forget all you hear online those that they got refused i will not come and say ah, i was refused today or come and celebrate with me no you only hear of people who have been approved right so those who have been approved the reasons why we've you know they've been uh, approved uh some of the things that i said before funding is number one uh reason and uh, let me also add this last point so people get scholarship to come study here fully funded scholarship you know for their tuition the fact that you have been fully funded does not mean that you get the visa approved people make that mistake so, so people make that mistake funding is not the only requirement for your visa applications there are other things but today in this video i'm only talking about proof of fund so even if you get fully funded scholarships please uh you know do all you can to dot your eyes cross your teeth properly and be sure that every other aspect of your application you know is is well addressed is well you know documented is well uh you know is well presented just do what you can so if you have addressed the issue of uh funding be sure to also address other aspects uh you know ties family ties economic ties documentation study plans and the likes this is just talking about proof of funding i'm not talking about funding just to make this video short that funding is an integral part of this process so even during my sessions with my clients i always start with funding once i explain all these things that i explained in the video the funding the tuition because of living and all that stuff i always ask mama sir is this feasible is this funds available? Is it accessible? Before we now start to talk about other requirements, because funding is an integral part uh, of study permit applications, right? So I've come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned the thing or two. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you are here to uh, like, comment, and share my video that you think somebody else might enjoy. Thank you and have a great time. Bye.